Penn State football fans. I'm Bob Flounders. Dave, jo- Dave Jones is joining me. He is having lunch right now. It looks like a, it looked to me like a salad, but he said it's something else. Dave, how are you? It's the Blue White Breakdown Podcast. What is that thing? This is what I eat every morning. Excuse me. I was late. Um, that looks very high in fiber. It's a pita. See, you, you pick it up. Oh, okay. Toasted pita. Oh, okay. Turkey bacon. Yeah, okay. Girl Good buddy stuff. Roxy and Moses would be proud of me. Okay. Turkey bacon, cherry tomatoes, <laughs> uh, arugula, fresh <laughs> eggs from next door. We have two neighbors. With chickens. Who have their own hens. Yeah. Yeah, hens. Sorry. And um, at first, I thought it was a plate of nachos, and I was like, whoa, that is not a great, great way to start no, the day. No. Well... And you got your coffee with you? So How are you gonna doing, be... man? You, you fill out your bracket? Did you do a bracket? Did you do a pool? What did you do? Uh, I'm in the process of uh, finalizing my uh, my thoughts. I wanted to talk to you first. We're going to we're gonna do Penn State news first, and then we're getting into the tournament. I promised the listeners uh, and the viewers that you would talk a little hoops uh, right before the tournament. We are two. Well, is it today the first day or it's tomorrow? The play in games. Today, what is that? Today, 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 tonight, the first, first. All tomorrow. right. So we're going to, we're going to get into that Dave. but after we get done talking about your lunch, uh, I did want to mention because this will be the last chance we talk before Penn state practice kicks off on Monday. There is a James Franklin, uh, news conference up in state college. I didn't know if you were aware of that, but, uh, I don't, they haven't really told us what's going on, but he's scheduled to, uh, to meet with us on Monday to kick off spring practice. Uh, just real quick, I know we talked a little bit about it. What What are your big thoughts about Penn State? What are the, What do you want to, what do you want to, I guess not see from them, but what do they need to do, man? What do they need to do to get uh, more points on the board, be more competitive, uh, find out, need, find out a way to win to the on a, They need to decide on a personality. Yeah. And the personality is built around the quarterback because the offense is built around the quarterback. Yeah. And the offense dictates these days what you do with your defense. What kind of defense are you going to have? Are you going to, are you going to have a defense that just holds the fort down? Or are you going to have a defense that's the yeah. core of what you do? So are you a running team? Are you a throwing team? Are you a ball control throwing team? Are you a, a cast it down the field, yeah. field stretching throwing team? What are you? Because under James Franklin, this program has been – has tried to seem to be all three. Yeah. I mean, as recently as 2019, they looked like they wanted to be a running and defense team, which they kind of were, except mm-hmm. <laughs> against Memphis, that didn't work out. So they weren't yeah. really that. The only time they've had a pure personality is in 2016 and 2017, where they were a right uh, balls out, throw it down the field team <laughs> who, well, for lack of a better term, that's the best term to use. Sure. Um, where where they're, they're looking for big plays all the time. Yeah. They haven't been that for a while. Um, that's, what he, that's what he wants to get back to. Yeah, uh, well, he just hasn't been able to do it. I think they need the quarterback to do that. Now, to me, I mean, this is like Tom. <laughs> what did you think of Tom Brady, like, coming back? No one to say when, right? No yeah. one to, no one to get out. A 40, a 40, you know what I think? I think he was so miserable that Giselle was laying around the house moping, and Giselle just said, Get out of here. Just well, go back. Well, you know, play. that's a bad reason to get back in. But I think it's it's frankly, I, I don't want to say stuff like this about college kids, but I think it's time for Drew Aller. It's his time. And I would be more comfortable if they'd already decided on that and Sean Clifford hadn't come back. Uh, I That's the way I feel. I don't, how do you feel? I feel like – what I feel like, Dave, is <clears> – <throat> The minute one of the young guys are ready, and everyone assumes it's going to be Drew, the five-star, they do like the other young guys. The minute one of them asserts himself and they feel good about him, that's when you do it. If, it's, if, if they see that in August after they do some good things in spring, I think you do it. If, if, if it takes a little bit more time, they have an insurance policy with Sean for the first couple games if need be, but I, I am kind of aligned with you. I think the minute one of these guys shows – they can run the offense. Uh, they they're comfortable, uh, you know, playing in front of a crowd, and they can they can they can run the offense. I, I think that's uh, that's when you make the change. Yeah, but but this isn't twenty years ago anymore. 
where yeah. Joe Paterno believed in easing in any kid and, and maybe taking a year or two. Right. Uh, you remember when Matt Seneca was the quarterback because he'd been around for a while and yeah. they didn't let um, Zach Mills play for four I think weeks. it has to be this year. I'm just not sure when that point will come. Well, even year. if it's this year is what I'm saying. Yeah, you're you're basically using up half a season, I think, because Sean Clifford is not Matt Seneca. He's an established veteran. Right. He's not going to let go of the job. Easily. Right. Right. I mean, he's going to have to fall on his face, I think, for Franklin to make the switch. Don't you? That has been Franklin's kind of, you know, that's kind of what he's done. He 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 likes the incumbent, man. He loves the incumbent. He everyone, always has. Everyone, everyone does, but he just got a new contract. Right. He has the ability to take a big swing on something. I just sure. think it would have been easier if it was if, if you could hand the keys to Drew Aller and say, okay, this is this is where you start. We're not expecting uh, eleven and one here. Uh, we could deal with seven and five, but we need to teach you now and teach you for a full season. That's that's all I'm saying. It would it would yep. be easier to make the transition. But I guess yep. we have what we have. We have what we have. Anything, any interest in maybe what Manny Diaz might do for this defense, or do you think it's they have some pretty good athletes and they're going to figure it out? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I think in in all cases, that came around so quickly. The, the way coaches have to hire assistants these days because of the transients in college football and the money flying around is they yeah. have to grab whatever they can get when they get it. And there's no having a black book with a guy who – might be around in three years and you can plan on that. You can't even plan on next week anymore because <laughs> stuff happens so fast. It's like musical chairs and whoever you got when the music stops is who you have. So I don't even know what to think of Manny Diaz. He was a great coordinator, but doesn't he still want to be a head coach? Of course. he does. Think so. yeah. but Once you've been a head coach, you want to be a head coach again. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the OC wants to be a head coach too. Oh, yeah. So I would say this is part of the problem with college football these days. Unless you have an established culture and personality, it's really hard to keep it. And if you have to establish it, um, you're constantly dealing with uh, this constant turnover of assistance. It's hard to do, man. It's hard to do. Yep. Yep. Uh, two more thoughts. The offensive line better come together uh, fairly quickly. They bet they got to find five guys they like. See, see how that looks. And I'm really excited to see. Uh, the five-star running back at some point, uh, Nick Singleton, the Pennsylvania kid. I've heard nothing but great things about him. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a question about you. Given the roster that you have and that you see, do you yeah. believe in an established personality or don't you? Do you think? A, a, no, I do. I definitely do. I do too. I do. Um, they so need. What, I think. I think. Well, I think, Dave. I think they need to be. They need to be able to score points in a hurry if they have to, but at the end of games, they have to be able to finish teams off. So they need to do, be able to do a little bit of both. I think everyone does, but, but I think it yeah. gets back to what you expect of your defense. You have to yeah. tell your defense what kind of team we're going to be in order to, right. to allow them to be, uh, to, to set who they are because the offense these days runs everything. Uh, you, you establish what your offense is, then you tell your defense what you want them to be. And yeah, I still I still don't know what the hell this program is. That's that's what I'm saying. <laughs> to me, it's everything. Yeah. Yeah, they they you know that defense they had last year, uh it got a little worn out, Dave, but that was a good defense. And they, they just there were some I mean, there were some games where they gave up some points, but they were awfully good in the red zone and they deserved way, way better than seven and six. It's unfortunate. And uh to your point. Uh, the offense just just was not was not good enough. Ever ever since Clifford got hurt in the Iowa game, you know that really that two game stretch they never were able to recover from it. When did, when did Brent probably have a bad defense? Really, I mean, twenty twenty and maybe twenty sixteen you would mention, but otherwise, yeah, twenty sixteen defense, was yeah, good. yeah. Um, all his defenses were pretty good. Twenty sixteen they could overcome it because they had that quick strike offense. 20 mm -hmm. and all the great wide receivers, 2020, they could not. Uh, I don't think this offense is that, do you, that, that they no. had in 2016? Uh, no, that's that's right. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. Um, I don't know. I just, uh, 
it's an interesting year. A lot there's there could be a lot of interesting things happen. I think between now and maybe the opening. Yeah, I tell you what, it would be a hell of a lot more interesting for James Franklin if he didn't have that new contract, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it would. Yes, it would. Yeah. Uh, but he yeah. he's yeah. got it. He's got he's got he's got time on his side. If he wants to pull the trigger, he could do it. Let's see what he does. But yeah, I think spring practice is going to be pretty pretty interesting. April twenty third. Is the blue white game also my birthday? So yours is oh three days. God. Yours is three days earlier, April twentieth. Should I bring liquor? What? Should I bring, what? Should I bring liquor to the press box? Bring some whiskey, okay. uh, and we'll just see what happens. We'll just you know, it's the blue white game. We'll just do shots at the start. What are they going to do? What are they going to do? Kick no, us out? We don't do that. We don't do that. I did drink no. two beers one time at Wisconsin before the game. I've admitted oh. that in public. What what year was that? It was like nineteen. What was the first trip we made out there? 95, 96? It was uh, like the last place we went in the Big Ten, right? I, I I was at the 95 game as a fan at Penn State. So it would have had to have been – it was definitely not 1995. That was the game they lost. I think it was 96. That was yeah. the first trip uh, we made out there, and I got a little caught up in the atmosphere. It's a great yeah. – if you haven't been to Madison, if you haven't been to Camp Randall, wouldn't you say that's the place to go in the league, yeah. that if you had one place to go, sure, that's the yep. place to go? Uh, and I, I actually like that picture of you with the band this year. I thought that was uh, one of my one, one of your better moments with with the interaction. I bought, this, I bought this that day. Okay, um, all right. The Badgers. I is, like well, it. Is Bucky great? I mean, is that a great mascot or what? You know. Is it yeah, it would be funny? nice. I would. I, kind of looks like Bo Pelini, doesn't he? What do you look at? <laughs> he does. He is sneering at me. Um, uh, it just. You want to get it on? You want to get it on, you wanna get it on my man? I, uh, I would be thrilled if, if Wisconsin was on Penn State schedule every year, so that means that every other year we could go out there. That would be great. What if what if we just have an away, 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 you know? Every, <laughs> in Penn the State, new Big Ten schedule. Wisconsin and Northwestern so I could get out to Chicago a little bit. Those, See, and Minnesota, I, I, maybe. When I did all the venues, the Big Ten venues, I put, I put Northwestern second, and people were going, what? What are you yeah. talking about? And it is kind of a blasé atmosphere in yeah. the stadium. But yep. all the other stuff, it was about the trip. It wasn't yep. about the stadium. And even yep. around the stadium is great. The neighborhood. Mustard's neighborhood, Last Stand. You can get, yeah, Mustard's Last Stand. But you can, but but also the shops and, and how cool yep. it is, little tree-lined streets. And and then you got Chicago. You got Chicago to play around. That's that's like that's the, the best city to movie. me. That's my best. That's my favorite place to visit in the, in the United States is Chicago. I just love everything about it. You should it. live there. Why didn't you ever live there? Well, the winters there. can get a little bit grim. Huh? The winters can get a little you bit. Never had any problem with that, <laughs> Dave. It's like forty eight below. You were always willing to warm yourself up one way or another. <laughs> I don't. I, I think. I think my life expectancy would probably. I'd lose about twenty to twenty five years. Of my life. <laughs> a just, lot of time in Chicago. Just, just on the processed meats alone, probably. Yeah. The meats, yeah. The meats, the just all of it. It's just so great. I love everything about that place. Mass transit. You really don't even need a car. You don't need a car. It's great. Well, all the different foods, all the different Slavic neighborhoods, the the, the Polish sausage, the stuff, uh, the places around like where Mike Krzyzewski Eat dish grew up. pizza. Yeah. I mean, I don't like to, no, 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 I don't like deep dish pizza, but they have a weird pizza out. too. I know. Believe me, believe me. If you know anything. I think crust pizza is really good in Chicago. It's, Very yes, good. it is. It is. If you know anything about pizza nationally, or if you grew up in the Midwest, I thought I knew what pizza was when I was in the Midwest. Uh, buddy, I mean, East Coast pizza is pizza. New York, Philadelphia, especially New York pizza. New That's Haven, New Connecticut. Huh? New Haven, Connecticut's got really good pizza too. When were you? Did thinking? you know that? Did huh? You go to Yale? No, but I mean, you, you just watch the travel shows and I, you do you look at some places. They have some very it's like world renowned pizza up in New Haven, Connecticut. I did not know that. They call it a pizza. A p it's a pizza. You look it up. Look it up, Dave. Okay. What, Educate what, yourself. While we're, while we're on this. Anna got one of those square things from like where Rich Garcella is. Yeah. They, they're storing that down here. I don't think it's going to fly. What do you call that stuff? The, the stuff from the coal region? Yeah. Uh, there's, 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 there. there's a place actually in Harrisburg that has it too. It's, it's pretty good. It's, 
the sauce is a little bit redder, I think, than you're yeah, used to. Yeah, and, little and little sweeter, and I'm not a fan. But okay. And people eat it cold all the time, which I don't get. Uh, Dave, but. the place that everyone raves about that I've heard about in Philly is uh, Angelo's. Have you ever been there on Ninth Street? If, if if everyone has their own neighborhood pizza place, and here in Downingtown it's Leone's, and I don't go anyplace else because it's exactly okay. what I want. The guys there are brothers who acquired the shop through their father, and they're no all they're all Yankees fans, which they and they don't care; they flaunt it. And in, in yeah, Philadelphia, which is hilarious right off. And I mean, I, I know all those guys. I've, I've, my kid grew up. There's the, one of the, one of the guys, Travis, whose real name, real name is Santino. He used to give <laughs> Nick dough to play with when he was two years old. Cause he was fascinated uh-huh. with, with Travis making the pizzas behind the counter. So he'd give right. Nick his own little piece of dough and we'd come home and make a pizza here but the crust is the thing the yep. crust is everything and i never had good crust until i came east i didn't know uh, in in the in the west in the middle yeah, that ohio that ohio yeah, dumpster sure. fire you're from they don't even have good pizza no man it's all the go back to ohio eat. dave um the, the, the all you need to know about ohio or the midwest is everything is franchise pizza yeah. so right. There are no little shops. I mean, everyone swears by their own shop, their own family family shop in their own neighborhood. So Leone's is ours. It's the only one. There aren't any others. There's no chain. Have you ever gotten good pizza in State College? Yeah. I mean, the old, um, what's the place that doesn't exist anymore? Um, the, uh, on, on, on Atherton. Um, I can't remember the, you know, you know the name of the place. We've been there. It doesn't. It's not there anymore. The Raskeller. No, no. It's it's out on Atherton. Oh, coming in. I only know. I only know beer, Dave. I don't, I'm just kidding. Um, we got. We should have Brennan on to talk about State College. Pizza. Brennan would know what I'm talking about. God, I used to go there all the time. It was good. Yeah, it was good. Okay. All right. I was just. I, I didn't know. I didn't know if State College had a good pizza joint. That was it. <laughs> I think. I think a lot of people nope. went to Papa John's up there, you know. <laughs> All right. Hey, it's the Blue White Breakdown. We talked about Penn State football. We talked about Dave's favorite pizza spot uh, in his home, not his hometown, but where in Downingtown. So let's talk about the let's talk about the tournament. I want you to give me your thoughts. Do you think it's gonna be a, uh is it gonna be like a one seed that wins this thing? Do you give yeah. do you give anyone a, a sleeper a shot? Give me some good stuff. Yeah, I'm afraid so. I mean, this seems like the kind of year where Somebody like Butler or Wichita State could could crash the party, but I don't see like Butler got really close to winning it in 2010, and I was yeah, right, I, I was right behind Gordon Hayward's shot. I was like 30 feet behind him online watching that thing go up the 50 footer from half court. I was right behind him, and it was online, man. I was thinking that thing's gonna bank in, and that's the only time. A little school has really gotten close. George Mason got to the Final Four. They didn't really get close. Loyola got there. They didn't really get close. I don't see that happening. But it it should be that kind of year because there's nobody dominant up top. What I have in the Final Four is Gonzaga, Arizona, Kentucky, and Kansas, which could not be more boring. We pick three one seeds and a two seed. Yep. Uh, It's it's what I came up with because I don't see – you know, every, who's the sexy pick right now to who, who isn't a one or two to make the final four? Yeah. Everyone knows who it is. Who is it? No, well, I, I thought I think I thought everyone was kind of on the Arizona bandwagon. I, I that's what I'm I was. About, I know there were, I'm talking about not yeah. a one or a two. Uh, who who's a sexy pick to make the final four right now? Uh, I it's a big wait a minute. Is, oh yeah, it's a uh, Iowa. Right. I don't believe in him. I can't believe right. him. Do you realize they haven't made made it out of the first weekend in 23 years? I mean, they haven't won two games in 23 years. So I I can't believe – I really like Fran McCaffrey. He's a good dude. He's a, he's, he's a really cool guy. Uh, he's a Philly guy. Uh, but their, their team is built around their offense. And I think this time of year – but they have more athletes than they used to with Keegan Murray – and his brother Chris and um, Tucson, and they've got some guys who can run around and they play a little better defense than they used to. And I don't think Providence is going to get them. I don't think Richmond is going to get them. Chris, this Chris Mooney against uh, 
uh, McCaffrey, which is a couple of Philly guys going against each other, which is interesting. But those are not teams that are going to um, challenge them on defense, which is usually what kills them. Uh, they've the last five times they've gotten um, they've lost in the tournament over the last nine years, they've given up, I think it was 83 points or more every single time. So they always come up against the side yeah. that they can't defend. And this time it's going to be Kansas. I'm afraid if you know, there's no reason that Kansas won't survive, all they got to do is play Creighton. And I just don't see it, man. That's, but they will, they, they will win two games. They should win two games unless they can't beat Providence. And then it's going to be another big 10 Pratt fall. The one thing I, I do see is another another failure for the Big Ten. I don't see anybody. I don't see Wisconsin getting by Auburn. Um, I I don't see Purdue getting by Kentucky. Although some people are picking that, I don't I don't I don't think Purdue can defend Kentucky's guards. Um, and Illinois is all over the place. They're going to yeah. come up against Houston. It looks like. And you can't really pick Illinois in that game. And if they do get by Houston, they got to play Arizona. There's no way that I can see any of these Big Ten teams getting to the Final Four, which is another failure, which is a, a you know a long running narrative with this league. No championship out of the Big Ten in 22 years, and Good. they keep saying they're the best league in the country. Well, where is it? The best league in the country. Where? The best league in the yep. country shouldn't just be the best league top to bottom. Yep. You're not talking about the ninth and 10th place teams, which this year would be Penn State is 10th, and that's a really good 10th place team. They are. Micah yeah. Shrewsbury did a terrific job patching together a team that won nine Big Ten games, uh, lost 14, but won nine, uh, including the tournament. With that, I mean, it was it was really kind of remarkable. But Gonzaga, Gonzaga, Kansas, Kentucky, and who was your fourth team? One, the other one seed? Arizona. Arizona, okay. And who do you have winning it all? I got Kentucky beating Arizona. I think uh, Woo! the kid from Erie. Um, they had a great final in 97, Kentucky, Arizona. Arizona won. Remember that team? 97 or 98. I was there, yeah. It was, uh, that, that was a, they were like a seven seed, and they whooped 20, them. 25 years ago. In overtime. Yeah. yeah. 25 years ago, this, this Miles year. Miles Simon. Uh, but people from around PIAA country might remember uh, Kentucky Center, who started out West Virginia and now is, uh, I mean, he's gotten really good really fast. Um, and he's a really interesting player for this time in basketball because no one really has a dominant center other than like Kofi Coburn at Illinois. Um, he, he's only, this kid's only played basketball for, uh, for eight years. At all. He grew up in the Congo. <laughs> and and he's going to be a lottery pick next year. Uh, he went to Kennedy Catholic before uh, going to Bob Huggins at West Virginia, and then he transferred over. Anyway, I, I, I think this is a horse that Cal can ride. Um, I don't know if they can beat Arizona, but I picked him. Arizona is certainly the pick, the obvious pick for everybody. And I think they're better than Kansas. I think Kansas gets out of the uh, – of that out of their region simply because there's nobody there to beat them. I mean, Wisconsin's not going to do it, and Iowa's not going to do it, and I don't think Auburn's going to do it either. Uh, so All right. Usually, usually you have one dominant team, which I think we have in Arizona, but they're not that dominant. You could see Gonzaga doing it. You could see Kansas doing it. I don't think a lot yep. of people see Kentucky, but that's my pick. Dave, I'm going to give you three teams. Tell me their fatal flaw and why you did not – Consider them as the final four teams. Coach K, Duke, go. They're they're young and they're kind of callow, and sometimes they make uh, bad decisions. You know, they, nice they, work. The Virgi the, the the the. Did you watch the uh, Virginia Tech game? I didn't. Well, that was a typical. That's a you know that's a that's an eleven seed beating them in the ACC championship game. That's all you got to know. And of course, it was a motivated 11 seed because they uh, it's 11 seed in the uh, NCAs. Yeah, um, that would not happen with a classic uh, Shishovsky team. Uh, neither okay. would the North Carolina debacle have happened at Cameron. You did see that, right? Or did you? Uh, I think I had wrestling duty. I, I've been I've been I've been bogged down by high school wrestling. So not bogged down, but that is busy. bogged down. <laughs> No, no. I don't want any wrestling no, fans to hear this. Come, right come looking for me and cradling me. So. 
Uh, all, right. all right, I got two more teams for you, Dave. Yeah. U- UCLA. Oh, they. I've got them. I've got them beating Baylor. Okay. But because I like their experience. They have a whole bunch of guys who've been through it, uh, and I do like Tiger Campbell because he's. They've, they've been through the wars. They've been through the battles. I I, I just I don't do like it. Huh? I like the coach. You know, he gets a lot of uh, – Cronin gets a lot of abuse because of the way he looks and because he's constantly there's, – there's a meme in Cincinnati that the Xavier people used to use of him in the <laughs> lollipop guild. Oh! Um, going like this. <laughs> oh. his, his head's put over as they're singing the – you know, from The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> and, and it's really mean, but it's really funny. Yeah. Um, he gets a lot of abuse, but he's a really good coach. He is. Yeah. I mean, he showed it last year. Uh, I, I don't. I don't dislike anything about him. I just. I just think they got in the wrong bracket. I mean, Kentucky's. Okay. I could have seen him beating Gonzaga. I could have seen him beating Kansas, but I've got Kentucky over him. They might make it. It's but but okay. they got to go through both Kentucky and Baylor. It's a tough bracket. Last one for you: the Tennessee Volunteers. I don't have a good reason. Um, I love them. I mean, I, I, they, they look like a serious team in the, in the SEC uh, championship. Um, and their only problem is, again, that they're coming across the best team in the league, or in, in the nation, in Arizona. Arizona, I'm only picking against Arizona in the championship game uh, because Tommy Lloyd is going up against Cal, and he's never been there, and he's been behind Mark Few all his, his whole career for 20 years. And I think that's okay. worth something. So. If he comes up against somebody else, Arizona could win. They could win the whole thing. Unfortunately, Tennessee is in their bracket. All right. So I, I kind of like Tennessee, but I'm also leery of teams that make big run, not not big runs, but the more they play in the tor- their their conference tournament, sometimes right. they just don't right. kind of yeah. they can't replicate it. It's hard well, to replicate. If you play that well for that long, weird things start happening to you. You know, you're, yeah. you're, you're at that, especially at that age, uh, the kids start believing they're a little better than they are at bad times. And Tennessee's a fairly, fairly young team too. I mean, they got a couple of freshmen and big Kennedy Chandler and, uh, who's the other kid? I can't think of the other kid's name, Ziegler. Those are, those are important parts in big situations. There are a couple of guards who have to have to run the team and I don't, uh, the, it would be the one thing that I don't like about their situation yet. All right. Now, one more thing before we let you go, Young Jones. I want from you a first round, no doubt about it, sh- not shock the world, but I want an upset pick from you in the first round that's going to surprise some people. Take it to the bank. You heard it on the Blue White Breakdown podcast from Dave Jones. So-and-so upsets so-and-so. Give it to me. Vermont over Arkansas. Woo! Uh, it's not shock the world, but it, you want a real a surprising upset, right? That that yeah. feels. What 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 what's Vermont's seed? They're a thirteen. Okay, well that's what's that four versus thirteen? Yeah, yeah. Um, Arkansas, okay. Arkansas. I I like the situation. First of all, Arkansas got axe murdered. Um, <laughs> their Eric Musselman, their coach, was just like so graphic oh on this God. podcast. The whole game, oh, they got they got beat out, by, ass murdered. They got murdered by A and M, eighty-two to sixty-four, I think, in the mm. SEC semis, and it was ugly and it looked bad, and it was dispiriting, I think, um, for for them. Now they got to go, they, they got to go to Buffalo. I mean, what is an SEC team? You're, yeah. you're supposed to get seed preference if you're a one through four seed. Oh, somebody wants a walk. Somebody. I heard the bark. I heard the bark. Somebody wants a walk. Um, does Does Kaiser get any of the pita or no? <laughs> anyway, that um, Arkansas's got to go to Buffalo yeah. to play Vermont. Right. All those Not Vermont great. fans, and they love basketball. Um, Vermont's got a serious coach. Uh, it's not Tom Brennan anymore. I can't remember his yeah. name either. But um, they uh, Becker, John Becker. And nice. he was, you know, people were mentioning him for the Penn State job at one point. But but he's he's a very serious guy. Um, they got shooters all over the place. Arkansas is kind of a little down and down in the dumps. 
they got to make this trip to Buffalo, and all the Vermont fans can come over. It's a six-hour drive. You just drive over on 90, and you're there. And Buffalo's like Vermont. It's <laughs> like driving from Philly to Pittsburgh. Yeah, it's like right? yeah, there's, there's another situation. Where, who was it? Um, Boise. I like Boise over Memphis, but that's not really a big upset. You wanted a, a bigger one. But okay. Boise. I'm writing all this down, Jones. Uh, Memphis, Memphis got seated out in Portland. Um, that's a, a long flight. And then you got to play Boise basically in front of all their home fans because they, they go up, I think it's 84. It's another six-hour drive through Oregon. Uh, it's one state over. And all those people can come there. And that's that means something. You've got a whole ton of fans you're fighting. Uh, so those, right. are the, those are the two I would pick. All right. I love it. Well, listen, I don't want to keep Kaiser from his his long walk with uh, with his uh, with his dad. So I'm going to let you go. All right. Just to be clear, Gonzaga, Kansas, Kentucky, Arizona in the final four. And in the final, Kentucky knocks off the Arizona Wildcats. Yes. Correct. You got it. You got it. All right. We were going to be we're going to keep the score, Jones. So don't be don't be they changing your do. mind. This, this is official. I this is care. official. I don't care about your criticism. I never have. All right. No, I don't, I'm just trying to keep it honest with you. Especially you, you know. You want to go at him, my man? <laughs> don't, point, huh? hey, don't point at me. You want to don't go at point him? at me. Look, don't look you point at me. <laughs> Kaiser, have a great walk. We will talk to Dave uh, next week on the Blue White Breakdown right. Podcast happy, after the start of Penn State practice. Happy first, uh, first uh, four, everybody. 